Under impact conditions, the design of the seats and restraint systems can have a significant effect on survival. The seats can face forwards or backwards. Which direction is best? In aircraft emergencies, fire frequently follows a ground impact. Fire services can reduce the severity of the fire, but survival depends on the ability of the passengers to escape from the wreckage. Transport aircraft have a good safety record, but accidents can still occur. To limit post-crash hazards, special features can be incorporated, for example, backward-facing seats. Tests have been conducted at the Institute of Aviation Medicine, Farnborough, to investigate this problem. Four types of seats were used. The first two were standard airline seats, fitted with lap belts facing forwards. Seat C was fitted with a diagonal shoulder strap, while seat D was backwards facing. These four seats were mounted in turn on the IAM decelerator using standard aircraft floor track fittings. The seats were orientated either forwards or backwards facing and were mounted at the same pitch as in current transport aircraft. Dummies were used for the tests. These dummies are made as lifelike as possible and are fitted internally with accelerometers. Specially designed strain gauges were attached to the straps to measure the forces during impact. These gauges can be used to predict the pressure on the abdomen during impact. The electrical outputs from the strain gauges were led to a console which recorded the data from the tests. Before the tests, the accelerometers on the sled and those fitted inside the dummy's head were calibrated for accuracy using a small centrifuge. An accelerometer was attached to the sled to sense the acceleration pulse. And a valve on the hydraulic pistons of the decelerator gear regulated the level of deceleration. A high-speed camera was used to record the movement of the dummies during impact. The acceleration pulse was displayed by an oscilloscope with a memory circuit and the pulse was photographed. A dummy dressed appropriately was positioned on the seat. The first test used seat A at 5.5 G. Seat A had two attachments to the aircraft floor. The decelerator was powered by rubber cords and an electric winch was used to pull back the sled to stretch the cords. By choosing the appropriate number of cords, the speed of the sled at impact could be controlled. The sled was decelerated by steel cords arranged across the rails, which were attached to hydraulic pistons. When winched back, the sled was held in position by a bomb release. A locking pin was inserted for safety. The track was then prepared for a run. The electronics and camera operators and track safety officer were warned. The bomb release was opened and the sled accelerated down the track until it met the steel cords. Here it is again, this time in slow motion. The clock divisions represent milliseconds of time. Note how far forward the dummies move. Although the pelvis is held in place by the lap straps, the chest and head move forward, so the head strikes the seat in front. The legs fly forward under the seat, and the seat backs pivot forwards. This assembly was also tested at 9G. This is the design limit of aircraft passenger seats as stated in British Civil Airworthiness requirements. This level of acceleration is well within human tolerance, so providing the restraint is satisfactory, the impact should be tolerable. The deceleration in slow motion shows that as the forces of impact are greater, the dummies move faster and go farther. The seat backs folded forwards and would hamper rescue after an actual aircraft emergency. Seat B was also mounted facing forwards and is similar in construction to seat A. It was tested at 5.5 G. 
In slow motion, watch the head of the dummy hit the seat in front. The trace from the accelerometer in the dummy's head shows that it hit the seat in front with considerable force. If a human had been sitting in the seat, that head impact would probably have rendered him unconscious. Unconsciousness, after impact, reduces the chance of escaping from a crashed aircraft. The impact forced the dummy's feet under the seat in front. If the seat then collapsed, serious leg injuries would occur, which would further reduce the chances of escaping alive. The dummy's head hit the seat in front with sufficient force to mark both the seat and the dummy's head. Seat B was then retested, this time at 9G. The dummy hit the seat back with considerable force as it folded forward. During the impact, an armrest broke off. After the impact, the dummy's hands and legs were jammed behind the seat back, and considerable force was required to free them. This would make rescue difficult. The next seat tested was seat C at 5.5 G. This seat was fitted with a diagonal shoulder strap. The diagonal strap was fastened to the seat back and to the lap strap. Although the lap and diagonal belt was more complex, it was simple to put on and only had one buckle to release and adjust. During impact, the lap and diagonal strap prevented forward movement and completely eliminated the risk of head injury. The slow motion film it shows how the diagonal strap prevents the chest moving forward, while the lap strap restrains the pelvis. There is no contact between the head and the seat, but the legs and feet still move forwards and pass under the seat, so the risk of leg injuries still remains. Apart from slumping, there was little difference in the position of the dummies before or after impact. At 9G, the results were similar. There was little body movement during impact. Watch in slow motion how the chests of the dummies are restrained by the diagonal straps and note the lack of rebound afterwards. However, the legs still move forwards under the seat in front. The diagonal strap provided excellent restraint to the chest, but had little effect on head and leg movements. Seat D is exactly the same as seat B, except it faced backwards. The dummies were placed in the seat as before. But now the restraint was much better. The whole of the seat back and squab cushioned the impact force with about six times greater surface area than that of the lap belt alone. The cushions compressed and absorbed most of the impact force. The lap belt was still needed to prevent rebound and for the rare cases of a rollover accident. The track was then prepared for the final run. When tested at 9G, the force was almost twice as much as before. The restraint was excellent and the head, chest, pelvis and feet did not move relative to the seat. After the impact, a small rebound occurred causing the dummy to hit the seat back. However, the force of this impact was trivial. Let us compare that last result with the forward-facing seat again. Note the forward movement of the body, head and legs. Extremely high pressures occurred under the lap belt that could have caused serious internal injuries. High head impact forces occurred because the head usually struck the rigid needle tray of the seat in front.
This was confirmed by the accelerometer in the dummy's head. To summarize, forward-facing seats with lap belts have the disadvantages of head, leg and abdominal injuries, but they're convenient to use and are fitted to almost all civilian transport aircraft. The emergency drills card shows that with backward-facing seats, passengers should sit up before a crash landing. But in forward-facing seats, passengers should rest their head and hands on their thighs to reduce the risk of injury. However, with the distance between most seats in tourist class compartments, it's difficult to adopt this position if you're tall. normal size individuals also find some difficulty, and even a short person cannot fully adopt the recommended position. Compared with lap belt alone, the lap and diagonal strap provides much better restraint. This assembly is not without some disadvantages. It's more complicated. The seat back must be fixed to support the diagonal strap. The floor attachments need strengthening, and there's still the risk of leg injuries. But the risk of head, chest, and abdominal injuries is greatly reduced. With backward-facing seats, much better restraint is afforded to the body as a whole. Head, chest, pelvis and legs are restrained, and the cushions absorb much of the force. The head acceleration is minimal. However, a backward-facing seat must be longer and stronger, as the seat back provides the major part of the restraint. The advantages are that the load is evenly spread over the body, and all types of injury are much less likely. Therefore, mobility to escape from the aircraft is more likely to be retained. So it's up to you as the fair-paying customer, forward or backward, which way do you want to face? <laughs>